Welcome to our study tonight on spiritual growth. This is session number 10 in the first, uh, first classes on spiritual growth. We're talking about building a solid foundation. And last week was our first message on building a solid foundation. We used 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, verses 9 through 15 as the text we were using about building a solid foundation. Let's read that again. <clears throat> Excuse me, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, on building a solid foundation. It says this, For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid that I've already, Paul's saying, I've already laid a foundation in your life. Nobody else can mess with this foundation. I've already laid the foundation of Jesus Christ in your life. Now, if anyone builds on, his, on this foundation with gold, silver, and precious stones, or wood, hay, and straw, each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it because I, because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work, which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. So last week we talked about building on a solid foundation. We talked about that we are God's building. And last week we talked about Paul laying the foundation in their life, that somebody else laid a foundation in their life. We talked about how there are, that our pastors and our leaders are the construction workers or the construction superintendents that actually build the foundations in our life. And then it's up to us then to build on that foundation. And this passage that we just read talks about Building on this foundation talks about two aspects of building on this foundation. It talks about, first of all, how we build on it. And second of all, what we use to build on it. Gold, silver, and precious stones, or wood, hay, and stubble. What we use to build on it. Then second of all, how we build on it. So in talking about, I want to go, first of all, about what we use to build on the foundation. The foundation is built out of the word of God and what we use to build on it is the word of God. The foundation that we use, I want to talk, I want to spend a little bit of time here talking about what we don't build a foundation on because I see a lot of people building the foundation of their life on the wrong things. I think every person, in fact, I know every person in the body of Christ, every person who is a Christian, if you ask them if the Bible was important, they would say yes. If you ask them, if, is the Bible critical, crucial to uh, what God's doing in their life, they would say yes. But I want us to examine our lives and be sure that the foundation that we're building on, what we're building on the foundation is the word of God because there are things in our environment that will crowd out the word. And they're not the things that you think. It's not the Democrats or the Republicans. It's not even the devil that crowds out the word in our life. Let me talk about four things. First of all, emotionalism. Emotionalism will crowd out the word of God. We have to be sure that the word of God, that the Bible is what we're building on our foundation. I like to feel good. I like church services that feel good. I like to come to church services and I like, I like it when the praise and worship is strong and uh, you can feel the power of God in the place. I mean, I, I love that. We, we all love that, don't we? But you can't build your life on a foundation of how you feel. You have to build it on the word of God and what the word of God says. Your emotions will change based on circumstances. And if you build your life on how you feel, 
The devil will be sure that your life circumstantially is like a roller coaster. He actually, you know, you can be down in the dumps so much that you start to dig your way out. One of the, one of the devil's tactics is to give you a good day and a bad day. And a good day and a bad day. The good day makes you feel like I'm climbing out of this. The bad day thinks makes you feel like that, uh, that you, can, you can never get out. But then you have a good day. It's kind of like golfing. <laughs> I've golfed with Michael. Paul's back there. Paul and I have golfed, you know, and it's kind of like golfing. There's a saying in golf, when you're, when you're on the golf course, you can be having a terrible day. But you can hit that one shot. I mean, you can just decide, I'm having such a horrible golf day anyway. Yeah, it's 210 yards to the green. I should lay up, but it's, this is the back nine, and it, this has been such a horrible day. Give me a three-wood. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for the green. Everybody in the cart is saying, you're crazy. Don't, don't. And so you hit the ball. It goes straight for the green, on the green. You're three feet from the hole. And you know what the people in the cart say to you? That's what keeps you coming back. We all say that to each other. That's what keeps you coming back. When you had a great shot like that, you've had a horrible day, but that one shot keeps you coming back. And so the devil will use this tactic to frustrate Christians. You can have a horrible, horrible, horrible time. And just when you, when you, uh, when you look like you might start digging for some answers, he'll give you a good day. And he wants to keep you on an emotional roller coaster all the time. But when your life is centered in the word of God, then it doesn't matter what kind of, ha you, every day can be a good day. Yeah, but what if this happens tomorrow? It doesn't matter because my life is centered in the word of God. Listen, if I have a big problem tomorrow, God's got the answer. So we're not ruled by our emotions, by our feelings. Second of all, or still talking about emotionalism and how we feel. Our moods will change based upon any number of circumstances, but God's word will never change. Hebrews 13, eight says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Did you know that tomorrow when you read your Bible, it's gonna say the same thing that it says today. Yeah. Next week, you're gonna read your Bible, it's gonna say the same thing it says today. But what if, what if, what if my business falls apart next year? Well, but when you go to the word, it's going to say the same thing next year that it says today. It's going to always be the word of God is always consistent. Every day, your day is going the way that God says it's going, not how you feel that it's going. So how do you feel today? I asked somebody, I went to, uh, I walked in a hospital room. I walked over to somebody's bed. Hey, it's great to see you. How are you feeling today? And they said to me, Pastor, you've taught me better than that. It doesn't matter how I feel today. The word of God says, by the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. Well, I felt about that big because that, that's, that's what I taught them. Exactly. But, but we, you know, we have this lingo hat and I, you know, I, I meant well. And people, when, don't rebuke somebody. If somebody comes, in, comes up and says, uh, how do you feel today? Don't go, well, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I, and they're just, they're concerned about you and they love you. And so don't, don't do that. Don't be a smart aleck. But Really, what's important is not how we feel, it's what the Word of God says. So, the foundation that we lay is the Word, not emotionalism. Second of all, and this is a biggie, <clears throat> take, a big, take, take a deep breath, not miracles. Being the kind of church, we talked, we're talking about emotionalism, and now we're talking about miracles. And being the kind of church that we are, being a faith church, being a church that believes in the power of God, being a church that believes in the miraculous, being a church that believes in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, being a church that sees God do powerful things, sometimes it's possible for people to depend on that. I don't get freaked out. If we go, if we have, uh, if we have six months of church services and we don't see a miracle happen at church, I don't get freaked out. Well, oh, Pastor Steve, we don't see miracles like we used to. I don't, listen, we don't, uh, we don't institute those. We don't uh, cause those to happen. The Holy Spirit does that. Amen. We center our lives on the word of God and miracles follow the word. The word does not follow miracles. I'm gonna say that again. Miracles follow the word, but the word does not follow miracles. And so as long as the, and I could, 
you know, it's hard for me not to teach on this for the whole rest of the time. In John chapter four, in John chapter four, I just want you to get this, that uh, a nobleman came to Jesus and his son was sick at Capernaum. This is John chapter four, verse 46. And when, G when he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to Jesus and he implored him to come down and heal his son for his son was at the point of death. And Jesus said to him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. But the nobleman said to him, sir, please come down for my child dies. And Jesus said to him, go your way, your son lives. Now watch this. He had not seen a miracle. Jesus said to him, you go back home. He asked Jesus, please come to my house because my son's dying. Jesus said, you go home. Your son is going to be okay. Had not seen a miracle yet. This, watch this. So the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and went back home. Hadn't seen anything happen yet. He didn't believe what he saw. He believed the word. And this is what we're trying to major on here at this church. Do we see miracles happen here? All the time. But they happen because people believe the word. People are standing on the word. People put, uh, put God's word first. And the power of God follows the word. So uh, don't be pursuing miracles. I see, I see people driving long distances to, to try to get a miracle, you know, and Try to, try to see miracles and you can see some miracles in your own life if you'll speak the word over your own life and just believe God to work because of the word. His word will give way to miracles. And then um, thirdly, not the philosophies of the world. You cannot build a foundation in your life on the philosophies of the world. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1, Paul said, and I, brethren, when I came to you, I did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling, and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So here's my word to you. Don't try to solve spiritual problems in the self-help section of your local bookstore. I'm going to tweet that as soon as we get done here. Um, now, you can learn a lot of things. I went to the self-help section of our local bookstore, and I got a book on how to improve your memory. There's nothing wrong with that. Had a CD with it, listened to that, got some techniques, helped me with my memory. I mean, it was, it was great. I'm not saying stay out of the self-help section of your local bookstore, but sometimes people go to the self-help section of, the, of their local bookstore because they want to find some other way to deal with life's issues besides what the Word of God says. Number four, not the opinions of others. Now, with the exception of mentors and spiritual leaders, there are mentors and spiritual leaders that you should, uh, you should take heed to their opinions. You should allow their opinions to weigh heavy on your heart and on your mind, and you should take their opinions seriously. But just remember this. Don't base your foundation on the opinions of those who have nothing invested in you. There are some people that want to give their opinion about your life, about what you're doing with your life, what you're doing in your life, the way you're going about life, about, uh, about the career that you have or the, how you're raising your kids. If you want to tell me how to raise my kids, you feed them. You send them to school. You change their poopy diapers. And then you can raise them. Now, I'm not talking about, here again, I'm not talking about mentors and spiritual leaders and people that should be speaking into your life. Everybody needs those. But did you, know, did you notice that sometimes there are people that are awfully free with their opinions and 
Uh, I think you need to take care of your own marriage before you start telling me how to take care of mine. So, uh, not the opinions of others. Don't base your foundation. There are people that have opinions about your spiritual life, about what you should do for a career, what you should do with your kids, how you should, how, how you should, what car to buy. I mean, there are people that have all kinds of opinions about your life and they have absolutely nothing invested in you. Not, they have nothing invested in you. And so don't base the foundation of your life on the opinions of those who have nothing invested in you. Got it? Yes, so that's how, that's how not to build a foundation. And some people, these are, these are uh, critical issues because there are people that, uh, how, their, how their day goes tomorrow is not based on what the, the Bible says today, this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and I'll be glad in it. How you doing today? I'm rejoicing. How you doing today? I'm glad today. Wow, things must be going well for you. I didn't say that. I said, this is the day the Lord has made and I'm rejoicing today. No, I got some issues I'm dealing with, but I'm rejoicing and I'm glad today. Sometimes the people who look the happiest are the people who are dealing with the most. They just know how to deal with it. So don't, what I'm trying to, what we're talking about is building a solid foundation in your life. And you can't build a foundation in your life by how you feel. So what kind of day are you going to have tomorrow? Did you know you can decide that today? No, well, we'll just wait till see what tomorrow brings. We'll wait and see if I get the promotion. We'll wait and see if we got the raise. Wait and see if the bank loan came through. We'll wait and see what the doctor's report is. And then I'll tell you, so how are you, uh, so how are you doing? Ask me tomorrow. No, I'm asking you now. Ask me tomorrow means I'm depending on what the circumstances are. And you can't build a foundation in your life if you're going to go. You can, but it's going to be built on circumstances. And that is just like building your foundation on the sand. Not on miracles. It's the same thing. How are you doing? Well, let's wait till tomorrow and see if God does a miracle in my life. No, the word of God works. And so we stand on the foundation of the word. We believe the word before we see the miracle. And thirdly, how are you doing? It's not based on the philosophy of the world. And uh, don't, uh, you know, I said uh, a few weeks ago, I was taught, when I was talking about the opinions of others, I was talking about we buy things we don't want. Uh, uh, we buy things that we can't afford to pray and press people we don't even like. And because the, the, uh, the opinions of other people are so important to us. And we've got to, we've got to get God's opinion. You're the son and the daughter of God. Jesus Christ is the firstborn among many brethren and you're one of the many brethren. And so God's opinion of you is what matters. God's word's opinion of you is what matters. <clears throat> so building on a solid foundation, you want to build on that solid foundation with the word of God, not on miracles, not on how you feel, not on the philosophies of the world, the latest self-help book, not on what you see on Oprah and Dr. Phil, not on the opinions of other people and what your neighbors think. Or, that's not what you build your life on. The most important thing in our life is what does the word of God say? And I'm building the foundation of my life on that. Amen. So that's what you build your foundation on. With, let's talk about how to build on the foundation of the word. In order to build on the foundation of the word of God, you have to determine to renew your mind. I believe that this is the most challenging thing that every pastor has to deal with. Pardon me, in pastoring a church. is getting people to renew their mind. I know it was a little bit strong. I, I asked a couple people last week, you know, if it was a little bit strong, you know, what I said when I was talking about, um, you know, just, just when a person gives their lives to Christ, they need to just calm down and let their pastor build a foundation in their life. 
You just, you get a Bible and sit there like a sponge and learn and learn it and let it get on the inside of you. And faith comes by hearing, do that. Well, but I, you know, I want to hear this. And, and, uh, and I even talked about the, you know, somebody was a little freaked out about me telling the story of the person who came to see me that wanted to know about, uh, you know, about the, was it about the rapture and eternal security? Was that what I t we talked about? Yeah, it was. They, they came to see me because they, their pastor taught them that there was, that, uh, they had taught them the un unconditional eternal security. That once you're saved, you can never be lost again. And they wanted to know what did I think? Well, the Bible doesn't teach unconditional eternal security. And that's a whole different, the whole, whole different thing. But I wouldn't even talk to him about it. My question was, whatever your pastor teaches you, you go by that. Because this pastor is trying to build a foundation in their life, and they're going everywhere trying to stir it up. Just get a foundation. Um, Connie says I should tell you this story. Do I have time? i got to tell this real quick. Connie says I should tell you this story. Uh, years ago, when uh, uh, our kids were really, really small, we went to a church. God led us to go to a church. We got involved in a church. And I had been teaching a Bible study in my home. And so when we went to this church, the, the pastor there, he had asked me to, to teach on a Wednesday night or something like that. And I did some teaching and, and it was obvious that I had a gift of that kind of thing. And he said to me, I recognize that God has gifted you and I'd like to be able to use you in our church to, to even to, to, to preach on Sunday nights to the congregation. I'd like to be able to use you, but. I don't ever want you to talk to anybody about being baptized in the Holy Spirit or speaking in tongues or the gifts of the Spirit. And if anybody comes and asks you about that, you send them to me. And I agreed. He was my pastor. This was our church. This was the only, and you're thinking, why would anybody go to a church like that? It's because we were in a really, really tiny town, and it was the only church that had any life in it in town. I mean, today, I wouldn't even, get, you know, I wouldn't even go to that church. But, so, but he was my pastor. And I said, I will honor what you asked me to do. And I did have people come up to, see not, to me and say, you know, I hear this and that. Can you tell me about it? I sent them to the pastor. A year later... He came to me and said, I never thought you'd do it. I never thought you would do that. He said, I thought you'd only be here a few months and, and uh, uh, you'd want to talk about all the stuff that you would want to talk about. And he said, but you did exactly what I asked you to do. And yeah, yeah, I preached on Sunday morning for him once. I preached on Sunday night several times. I led Bible studies for a whole year. I did all this stuff. Uh, and so... After a year, he came. He said, I never believed you would do it. He said, I have so much respect for, me, for you that from now on, from this day forward, you can tell anybody anything you want. Anything they ask you. If they ask you about speaking in tongues, they ask you about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you tell them what you want to tell them. Because this man was trying to build a foundation in the lives of these people. And what he didn't need was somebody in there trying to keep it stirred up. Foundation in the life of a believer, of a believer is really important. Now, I'm not advocating everybody go to a church that doesn't believe in the gifts of the Spirit. I'm trying to tell you, this was 30 years ago. And we're in a tiny town. There are no, there are no churches that, I mean, there, there isn't anything there. So, um, Determine that you will renew your mind with the word of God. And you do that four ways. First of all, there's the great exchange. Hey, uh, you know, you should have by now gotten an invitation to the uh, upgrade dinner. The, all the kingdom builders and destiny builders and legacy builders all come into an upgrade dinner. You want to be sure you, you come to that. Uh, I'm giving out Rob Thompson's book, The Great Exchange. At, at this dinner, and it's all, if you're not, if you're not, uh, you can get a brochure out here and sign up to be 
uh, to be a part of the building project if you're not. And, uh, and you come to the dinner too, but I want this, this book on the great exchange is a, about exactly what I'm talking about, which is exchanging your thoughts for God's thoughts. Amen. And it's, it's awesome, but this is what you got to do. You got to determine that you will renew your mind, that everything we think once we become a Christian, everything we think is subject to change. The most miserable Christian in the world is a person who, once they become a Christian, tries to hold on to their old way of thinking and walk in a new life. More people backslide because of that, because we don't realize I've got to change the way I think. And I've got to start thinking according to the word of God. Romans 12, 2 says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you can prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Exchanging your thoughts for God's thoughts. If you're going to build on the foundation of the word, you have to, exchange, you have to make up your mind that part of what you think is wrong. Most of what you think is wrong. Rob Thompson gave his life to Christ in a mental institution and determined that everything he thought was wrong and decided I'm going to empty my head of everything I think and instead I'm going to replace it all with what the Bible said. And now Rob Thompson's a walking Bible because everything he thinks is in here. So determine that you'll renew your mind, number one, by the great exchange, exchanging your thoughts for God's thoughts. Number two, Romans 10, 17, hear the word. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing the word of God. And so systematically, if you're going to build on the foundation <clears throat> that's being laid in your life, you need to exchange your thoughts for God's thoughts. You need to hear the word purposefully. If the only hearing of the word you're getting is on Sunday morning when you come to church, that's not enough of the word to exchange your thoughts for God's thoughts. You need all the word you can get and every day you need it. You need to be listening to it in your car. You need to be listening to it on your iPad, on your, uh, on your phone. You need to get, get the Bible app on your phone and put some headphones on and you need to be listening to that. Um, read it out loud to yourself. Pillow speakers. I know we, I think the last time I looked, we were sold out in the bookstore, but we'll get some more in. But I've got a pillow speaker and I love plugging my iPod into my pillow speaker and, and I can put it under my pillow and the word of God comes right up through my pillow, right into my ears all night long. Connie can't hear it. Only I can hear it. Anything that you can do to hear the word and hear the word and hear the word and hear the word. Number three, meditate on the word. Meditation on the word is so important. Joshua chapter one, verse eight, God told Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according, that all the, according to all that is written in it. From th for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. If you want to exchange your thoughts for God's thoughts, you have to meditate. On the word, And what that basically means is once you see that scripture or once you, you read that scripture, then you got to think about it over and over and over again. You ever read a scripture and you don't know what it means? There are two things you can do. Number one, research it. Look it up in a couple of different translations. The message translation or the new living Bible, those usually clear up uh, things. Message translation is not always accurate because it's a paraphrase, not a uh, not a translation, but if you look it up in two or three translations, you're going to get some meaning out of it. But then if you just meditate on it, the word meditate in the Hebrew comes from the Hebrew word for a, chow chew, a cow chewing its cud. When a cow chews grass, when a cow, cow eats grass, it swallows it and then regurgitates it, chews it, swallows it again, then regurgitates it and chews it and swallows it again. And that's what it means to meditate. You get that you have that verse of scripture and you meditate over, you chew on it over and over and over again. And it'll become a part of you if you do that. So thirdly is meditate on the word. Uh, Psalm chapter one, verse two, another scripture real quick. Oh, Psalm chapter one, verse one, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly or stands in the way of sinners, doesn't sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And upon this law, he meditates 
Day and night, he meditates. Turn off the TV for a while. T TV's not for, you won't go to hell if you watch TV. You might go to hell if you watch six hours of TV a day. That was a joke, sort of. But I mean, some of us, we could, I mean, just, just think if you, if you sacrificed one 30-minute TV program and you meditated on a scripture for 30 minutes, especially Proverbs. So it's meditating on the word. And then fourthly, and you knew I was going to get to this, is speaking the word, actually saying the word. Mark 11, 23, if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and you don't doubt in your heart, but you believe that those things which you say will come to pass, you will have whatever you say. And remember what we saw in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. God said, don't let the words of this law depart from your mouth. Be sure it's in your mouth. So meditating it, yes. Reading it, yes. Hearing it, yes. But if you want to systematically build on the foundation of the word of God in your life, you need to say it. You need to speak the word. It's not enough to believe by his stripes you were healed. You've got to say it. It's not enough to believe that God's going to meet all of your needs. You've got to say Philippians 4.18. My God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And you've got to say it. Now, all of these things are things that you have to systematically implement and you have to be deliberate about each step. Don't make the mistake. I want everybody to look at me. I know some people are writing and reading some things. I want everybody to look at me for a second. I want to close with this. Don't make the mistake so many Christians make, which is, that the only hearing the word and exchanging of thoughts that they have is when they happen to be in a place where they might hear the word. If I happen to be at church, then I'm going to happen to hear the pastor preach about it. And so I'm going to happen to hear that. Uh, if I happen to be driving down the road and a Bible scripture happens to hit my head, then I might just happen to think about it. Why is it that for some Christians, the only time they ever, listen to me, the only time they ever meditate on the word is when something bad happens in their life. And now they're asking, why did this happen? I thought the Bible said this. That's the only time they ever meditate on the word. And speaking the word, the only time that people speak the word is when I say, everybody say this after me at the end of a sermon. You have to systematically, deliberately decide step by step. I will exchange my thoughts for God's thoughts. I will on purpose listen to the word on the way to work. I will on purpose put this on my iPod. I will on purpose speak these scriptures out loud. I will on purpose listen to the word when I go to bed. I will on purpose turn a television program off every, I mean, how many reruns of your favorite show can you watch? Really? And I will on purpose say the word. Take some time out and speak these scriptures. You have to be deliberate. You have to systematically, deliberately speak the word. We're talking about building a solid foundation and then building on a foundation. How many of you have ever seen a foundation for a house laid and then the contractor drives by day after day to see if there's anything on it? He deliberately builds on that foundation. He shows up on the job site wants to know where his subcontractors are. We got to build on this foundation today. Where's my, has, has that load of bricks not come in yet? Call them and tell them to get those bricks here. We got to build on this foundation. The rains are coming. Come on, somebody. Amen. We got to build on this foundation. And I'm deliberate about it. And I've, I want to do it today. Hey, you, get off your butt and get over here and let's build on this foundation. Let's build a strong house here. And that's what we have to do in our lives. We can't just drive by the foundation day after day. Well, it doesn't look like there's much on there. Storm coming, still not under roof. Oh, well. No, you have to deliberately take the word of God and you've got to meditate on it. You've got to hear it. You've got to speak it. You've got to deliberately build on that foundation day after day after day after day. And if you'll do that, 
you'll be a strong Christian. Miracles or not, then your life doesn't depend on whether or not God does a miracle for you tomorrow. Your life's based on the word. And it will come to pass. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want to see you be a strong Christian.